All right, Shabbat Shalom, Israel, Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, I'm going to turn and face the east. And Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Call Haloyim, La Abanawa Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth, and who rules very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. All right, shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak-Kazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina and a hearty and healthy shalom as well to you achim wa akwathim you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation all right to say shalom that's hebrew for peace all right this is the ach alaya and also once again shabbat shalom right as we're currently still in the sabbath right uh but like i said this is the ach alaya the brother elijah and i'm here with a quick lesson the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in his last days for the edification of the elect. All right, when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference of the chosen Israelites, right? Which you Israelites, being the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, according to the Bible. All right, Let's see, hopefully, the picture's not going to be inverted. It looks like it's inverted right here, but you know, Lord willing, you know, coming with this lesson. But within this edifying to the sincere hopeful elect, right? Which is the chosen of the Israelites, right? And as you can see by the title of this lesson being, Then shall that wicked be revealed, right? So without too much else to say, we're going to hop right into the scriptures and Abaratazah, Lord willing, this is edifying, right? So we're going to start out with the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3. And the reason I might also, um, as I was reading before I started this, I might also jump back and forth between the KJV and the NLT, the New Living Translation, just for edification's sake, all right? But uh, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 3, and it reads, Let no man deceive you by any means, in the KJV. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, right? So as you can see, we're currently addressing scripturally biblical prophecy. You know what the Bible talks about, what is going to come to pass in the latter days, in the times before that great and terrible day of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua's return, right? Let's read it again. Matter of fact, in the NLT, it reads, don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. It says, and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction, right? Because when you go into that word perdition in the KJV, it goes into destruction, right? The son of destruction, which we understand is prophetically and spiritually talking about the Edomites, right? The descendants of Esau, right? His, his literal bloodline and descendants, right? Because contrary to popular belief, Contrary to what this world will have you to believe is that Esau and his descendants are done away with. They're already gone. They no longer exist currently physically in the earth. And that is not biblically sound, nor is it accurate, especially when you deal with prophecy, right? Which is what the prophets, the servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh have been set up for to bring forth in the earth, right? The will of the Heavenly Father, making known, you know, the Heavenly Father's will in the earth. Right, prophecy or to prophesy, pro meaning before and facade meaning to say, to say before. Right, so the men of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai have been given the unction through the Holy Spirit, the Rachachwadash, to speak on things before they occur. And one of those things that they, they, the prophets, you know, us, the, the men of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai have been set up to do is reveal who the characters, the main protagonists and antagonists are in the scriptures, right? Because that's how you'll be able to go through the scriptures and, and accurately, you know, point out who is who, you know, what uh, what is being done. Is it righteous or wicked? You know, that 
understanding is given through the Holy Spirit, man. Uh, so continuing on, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4, once again, the main context being the son of perdition, right? And his pro, uh, what should I say? His role, you know, and his position that he plays in prophecy, which as we go, once again, it said perdition, meaning destruction, right? This is what we're going into, the Edomites, the so-called white men, women, and child, self-proclaimed, right? 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4, it says, who opposeth, in the KJV, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God and showing himself that he is God, right? Because these Edomites have a God complex starting with the elites on down, you know? Let me see. Hold on. Let's lock it down. All right. You know, starting with the elites on down, you know, they, under they understand their role in the earth and it, it is not to be in league with righteousness. It's not to do the will of the heavenly father in regards to keeping his commandments is to do the complete opposite as it says to be the one who opposes and exalteth himself against who we know to be as Yahweh the power of the Israelites right so and, and, and it's evidently clear you know they call matter of fact I was going to get it later, uh, later but you know it, it popped into my head now through the spirit, man, Esau, Edom, they call this time and they acknowledge this time as what? The age of information. Why? Because with the click of a button, with the, the flick of a switch or whatever, you know, however you turn your devices on, you can go onto the internet, you know, and guess what? Go and do research and find out all the iniquities, right? Find out all the, matter of fact, even if you disregard the iniquities for a second, you can easily go and look up and find out various things that have taken place in the earth. Whether it be hundreds of years ago or a few days ago, you know, you can easily with the tap of a button, flip of a switch, find out that information. So once again, this time that we're living in through technology, the Internet, you know, is it's called the age of information because it's easy to find out things that you didn't know. You know, there's no excuse for why you don't know who the wicked is. There's no excuse for why you don't know if you're an Israelite or not. There's no excuse for why you don't understand that we're living in the last days of the last days of America, aka Babylon the Great's rulership in the earth. It's been set up to be what? The 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 final, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, theater, because back in the world I used to, you know, act and model and do things in the world. But there's what they call a curtain call, right? When they get they get all the uh cast and the crew members together and they all show like, yeah, this is my role that I played in the movie. We're basically living in a time where the Lord is about to reveal Esau Edom's role in his movie, which is to be who? The wicked, not the righteous, right? And shalom to all the beloved Achim, you know, and Akwathim that are on the comic board, that are that is on the comic board and, and is tuning in live. Shalom. Right? So let's read this again. Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. It says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God? Or that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sitteth, uh, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Right? Even you get on the internet, you look up images of God, pictures of God. You most likely gonna see a soft, effeminate, you know, old Edomite, so-called white man, reaching his finger down, you know, touching a butt, butt naked ass Adam. He's also a so-called white man. You know, this is some of the madness that you're going to get when you look up, you know, images of God. What do the angels look like? You know, little uh, naked Edomite babies, you know, with wings fly flapping around. That's not, you know, once again, that's not the truth of the matter. Once again, Esau Edom is set up to be the wicked and those who are adverse and against righteousness, a.k.a. truth. Right. So, you, you know, although once again, we are in the Internet, the age of information where through the Internet, you can get information. All the information that you get is not always biblically sound. It's not always accurate to the truth. So once again, the Lord has revealed his, his secrets to his servants, the prophets, to be sent forth into the world, to be able to discern between the righteous and the wicked and to plainly display it and bring it out before the people so that they can be edified, right? It says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 5, remember ye not? that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, right? So, because through the Spirit, you know, as we are men entering into the labors of, of 
you know, other men who in the past have previously labored and endured for the suffering of the word to preach this 100% truth. We understand that we're entering into those labors. And even in those times, you know, 2000 years ago, they were already talking about these things, how as the script, the next scripture is about to go into, the Edomites were already being wicked back then, right? The Lord has only allowed them through the duration of prophecy, right? His will taking place at the points in time where he wants them to take place. We understand that the ancient pagan Roman Empire, when it fell, it was it was not the end all be all of the Edomites. Their kingdom, their, their nation, their rulership has been revived as it was prophesied through NATO, right? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the EU, the European Union, right? These two, you know, organizations, so to speak, if you will, uh, were established to recreate the ancient pagan Roman Empire through America, you know? And, you know, through the spirit, we understand why, because that's the will of the Heavenly Father, ultimately for the man of sin to be revealed in the latter days. Because back then you had Israelites joined to the Edomites as you do now, and it was, their judgment was, you know, clouded. Because why? They wanted to be like the Edomites. They were conquered by the Edomites. Hey, the water. That, that brother just commented. And I'm gonna get these precepts too. It's like, you know, that brother just said, what? The Renaissance. I don't know why it's not lit. There we go. Yeah, uh, Yeramya Chazak. Renaissance equals rebirth. That's right. The biblical prophecy said that ultimately what? The, the ancient pagan Roman Empire would be revived. It would go through a Renaissance, a rebirth. The Edomites would come back into power. So in that time, it wasn't fully understood that, what, we had more suffering. You know, Yahweh Shah, even when he resurrected, he had to comfort his believers and say, look, when they asked him now, will thou restore unto us the kingdom of heaven? He had to say, no, you know, it's not for you to know ultimately when the kingdom is going to come. Ultimately, what it is for us to know is prophecy, what order things are going to take place. And matter of fact, real quick, while I say that, that's one way of how we know that these you know folly camps out here they're set up through esau and edom because they're not breaking down prophecy and teaching prophecy according to the scriptures man and i'll say not at all you know because either you have the truth and you're teaching it or you don't you know and according to biblical prophecy we understand that through america through the ancient pagan roman empire being reestablished, jacob's trouble has to then happen right because the edomites exist to be completely adverse contrary opposed to the Israelites, opposed to righteousness, opposed to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? As it says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things and know ye now, and now, it's so like, let me read it correctly, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 6, and now ye know what, would, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, right? So we're living in times where the Lord is, guess what? Allowing that curtain to be pulled back, allowing people's roles and, you know, their, you know, their duties that they were created to perform in these last days. The Lord is allowing us to see who is who, you know, based upon the spirit that the Lord has put within them, based upon the actions that these people are doing, they're going to manifest who they are, right? And what their purpose was, which you have wicked people and you have righteous right and you have more wicked than you do righteous but they both are currently playing and fulfilling their parts in prophecy within the earth right now as we speak all right let me get this scripture real quick this is beautiful uh the uh big brother uh Demawathia, shalom uh, gms and his likeness daniel 12 and 10 and it says many shall be purified and made white and tried right ultimately even going Applying to what? Through Jacob's trouble, the elect are going to be refined, you know, put through, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, it said purified, a purification process, right? Where the Lord removes all these impurities that we've been grown, born in, risen up in, lived in. You know, the Lord is allowing us to circumcise the foreskin of our hearts and fully turn back into him. And it's going to be manifested who the Lord is truly dealing with, you know, which are only the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, right? It says, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So when it comes to, you know, biblical prophecy, once again, that's our, our silver bullet, you know? When it comes to biblical prophecy, it, um, 
each character that the Lord has made in his movie, they are going to be made manifest by fulfilling their roles, right? It says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, right? And this is beautiful, like I was saying a second ago. Even back then in the ancient pagan Roman Empire, wickedness was already being done by the Edomites. They had their cabals, you know, their, their secret meetings, you know, their plans and plots and schemes to ultimately overthrow the Israelites, you know, and for a time, they did. You know, like we, we also addressed the Renaissance. They came back and they were actually doing good on their plans, man. The, the spirit of the Lord put on them to ultimately consume and, and, you know, enslave his people. That happened according to biblical prophecy, man. But what we're seeing now is the Lord is revealing their hand and exposing them as being the true devil that the Bible speaks of. That word devil in, in the Greek meaning diablos, deceiver, right? And which is one who is withholding the truth, you know, promoting lies, teaching that what? The Edomites are done away with. The Israelites are already in their land right now. Their salvation came through somebody else, through a, a Balfour declaration, not through an actual Messiah who died for their sins. You know, they're, they're saying that the entire biblical world, the world that the Bible paints is, is a fairy tale, man. Right. You had, I, I believe, who was the Pope? Uh, I believe he said what? The, the Bible has to be fact checked now. We got to They got to go through and, and fact check all these accounts in the Bible to even prove if they're real or to disprove them. You know, this is sick, man. Ultimately, they are doing their job as being the wicked, opposing themselves against the words of the Lord. All right. This is beautiful. I got that. I'm going to go there too in a second. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, he said that to you. Yeah, let's get this. Uh, the same brother, Yaramya Chazak, Luke chapter 8 and verse 10. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Yahweh, Bahashami Hawashai, but to others in parables, right? Because the Lord is not dealing with everybody. He's going to have the same truth out here, yet, you know, it, it's going to be uh, made a snare unto some, right? And it's going to be made ever everlasting life to others, right? Because what, what where is that? I believe Jeremiah, where it says, And the word was unto them, precept upon precept. You know, that some will ultimately what fall, stumble, be snared and taken. I believe that's Jeremiah. Uh, could be mistaken, so I'm going to check real quick. Okay, so like, yeah, it's Isaiah, right? As it reads, since I'm here, I'll just read it real quick. Isaiah 28 and 13 starts at verse 10, but I'm going to jump down to verse 13. But the word of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, which also goes to show you why you're not just gonna flat out be able to just pick up a Bible, flip to a certain page and just get the full understanding of, yeah, this is the whole truth right here, this is it. No, the Lord has this truth, you know, sprinkled here a little, there a little, as it says, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So yes, we're talking about a power whose whose name in the Hebrew, or who has a title in the Hebrew as Alashadia, a God who is not that does not exist to save any and everybody. He's very particular. So he'll have the truth out here, but it also has stumbling blocks all around it, right? To sift out the undesirables, those who he does not want to understand it, and he did that through separating his truth amongst his men you know and, and allowing them in the duration of time as time unfolds to reveal certain things about his movie that we call life you know which is that america once again babylon the great the daughter of babylon mystery babylon even because you know a lot of people don't know that america is in the bible but it, it's in the bible under code names a lot of people don't know that this is the nation and kingdom in which the mark of the beast will be implemented right Jacob's trouble would take place at, at the, you know, the, shall I say it, America is the, the epicenter of Jacob's trouble is the, where most of them judgments are going to be focused. And it's also the place of, of the second death that the scriptures talk about, that thermonuclear fire coming. This is all, all those prophecies, even the Lord Yahweh Shah's return, right? <laughs> all these prophecies focus and center around Babylon the Great, right? Because this is where the Lord has his people scattered to suffer these curses, right? 
But let's finish this off because I got a, a good bit in Second Thessalonians. I wanted to grab, and one of the brothers had already, you know, through the spirit, the brother was already there. All right, so let's keep going. All right, Second Thessalonians, chapter two. All right, and verse seven, it says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Even back then, the Edomites were uh, in existence. The Edomites were uh, in the earth. Once again, plotting and scheming against the righteous as me and the brother Yashima, you know, shout out that beloved brother. Yesterday we did a live stream entitled what? I was about to say it and say you're gonna take it out of my head. Let me see, I can pull it up real quick. We did a live stream entitled, they plot against the righteous. And this is not a new thing under the sun. Like the scriptures even say, there is no new thing under the sun. You know, it's only through the Holy Spirit that we're, it's being made known unto us now why things are happening the way they're happening. Right? We got, you got the, the gutter rats popping up out of, you know, holes in the ground, sewage, in, in, uh, sewage lines or whatever, you know, whatever you will call them. You know, but they popping up out of the ground and, and Lord knows what the hell wickedness was going on down there, man. Or, and probably is still going on in various other parts of the world, you know, or should I say various other parts of America and other parts of the world. You know, that's how wicked the Edomites are. The scriptures say that what the earth will be given into the hand of the wicked. You know, that's why even the damn ozone layer is polluted. You know, even the ocean is contaminated. You, you not, you, your, your kids don't even learn true history. You know, you could say to hell with all the, the spiritual points that we should bring out through our, from our past that's important. They're not even teaching the truth about who is who, you know? So it's major confusion here in the earth, and it sprung out of Babylon the Great. That's why America is called Babylon the Great. Babylon meaning what? Confusion. Babylon the Great, the Great Confusion, or the land of Great Confusion, man. It says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, right? So the Lord ultimately is allowing Esau to hide the truth, to promote all these lies, his uh, science uh, falsely so-called, right? His his uh, juices, right? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, his technology that he also wants to do what with? Merge man with machine. All these things that he's promoted and put forth before the righteous will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the Lord is allowing him to do this because that's what he was made for, right? It says, and then, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed. And this is the precept that the, the big brother, Damawathia, put up, right? GMS and his likeness, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And this is what we're literally seeing take place now. Once again, biblical prophecy taking place in the earth. We're seeing what? The prophets, the, the men who have been given the eyesight, the spiritual eyesight to what? Look out into the world and to see what's going on out in the world and then filter it through what they've been taught through the scriptures. That blessing has only been set up for chosen Israelites, man. And the men of Israel, not just all the Israelites, man, because the Lord has only been dealing with his flock, where, where scriptures tell us that the, the flock of his pasture are men, right? But we also understand the Lord is not just dealing with all of the men of Israel. He's only dealing with his elect, the chosen, the remnant, those who have basically been his servants in the past. You know, he's still dealing with them now to execute and to perform and to speak these words of truth to do what? And then shall that wicked be revealed. So it's going to happen via the Rahakwadash, the Holy Spirit being imputed unto those same vessels, those same men, for them to be the ones to lift up the skirt on this man, to reveal who this man of sin is, man, who the wicked really is. Because you ask the Christianity church, they'll tell you you were the wicked, you know? <laughs> it's fucking sick. They'll tell you you were the wicked one before you came into the church, before you, you believed in your Lord Jesus the Christ. You were that wicked, you know, and now you're being, no, man, that's not, it's not what the scriptures are talking about, man. The son of perdition, the son of destruction, the man of sin, that wicked is Esau Edom. We have precepts to back that up. Go to, look, Malachi chapter one, right? It tells you, uh, they shall be called Edom, shall be called what? The border of wickedness. Because ultimately that's where wickedness stems from. They were made, like the book of Job says, his spirit is not upright in him. He, he can't do nothing but against righteousness man you know let me see what the brother says like him all right 
All right, yeah, let's grab this. Same brother, uh, Yeramya Chazak, Isaiah 49 and 2. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. And how is the Lord doing that? Is this a, a damn Looney Tunes, you know, click where we can, or like a magician, I can pull a whole, put a whole sword in my mouth and pull it out. No, man, it's talking about this word. As the scriptures tell us that the word of Yahweh Hashem Shai is quick, which means it has the ability to make alive, to resurrect even. Right? But it says it's also more powerful than any two-edged sword because when this word is sown, it, it, it doesn't just stop at your ears. You know, although people who don't understand this word, it's, it's perceived as, you know, it goes, like that's saying the word, it goes in one ear, out the other. No, this word is so powerful. Even when you don't believe, those words entering into your mind cut you to the soul, to where you can't do nothing. If you're a scoffer, an unbeliever, you can do nothing but curse out the men of the Lord, even though you don't believe. You know, you, you can't do nothing but scoff on the comment boards, slander them, you know, come up with all manner of false accusations against them, uh, deliver them up to be put to death. All the same things y'all did in the old world, that's all y'all can do now. But we understand ultimately through the word of Yehovah, Shai, all these judgments are going to come to pass. The Lord said, none of the words out of my mouth shall return unto me void. Lucy paraphrasing. It says that he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword and the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver hath he hid me, right? So ultimately the Lord is gonna fight for his men, man. Yeah, we understand certain judgments are prophesied to come upon the men of Yahweh Shah. Some of us may have to be martyrs. You know, that's a that's the bitter as well as the sweet, man. But yet instead it does not negate the fact that we have a salvation to look for, even if we do be martyrs, man. Hopefully I said it right. Even if we are to be martyrs, man, we have a, a, a far greater reward to look forward to that death itself can't can't hinder it, man. You know, so that was a beautiful precept. Go on, brother. Once again, the Lord is, is executing these judgments, starting first through his mouthpieces. Matter of fact, I might have to grab that as well. If one of you brothers can drop it on the comment board for me. Uh, this is GMS in his likeness, Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bear. See, and I was gonna, I was gonna jump to it. I, <laughs> I got it right here. That's the spirit. Well, I'll read it now. It says, "But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places." Right. So this goes into once again his secret. You know, you know they have bunkers all over the world or various port, uh, parts of the world where they meet and have their summits. You know, which we know uh, summits in the scriptures. Or should I say governments in the scriptures are, are likened unto mountains, mountain peaks, because at the peak of a mountain, it's called what? A summit. And that's where the, the elites, the, the uh, those, should I even say just to simplify it, the Edomites, right? Because you have 13 families of the Edomites that, you know, they'll say run the world, which technically Job 9 and 24 does back that up. But long story short, the wicked, they ultimately commune together and they agree and plot. What is it? What scripture is that? Psalms 83. They ultimately come together to plot and to scheme and plan against the righteous, how to slay them, how to overthrow them. This is what we're seeing come to pass, right? It says, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and all their plans and agendas that they're planning on executing. The men of Yahweh Bashim Shai, once we hear of these things, we know that, oh, yeah, they're doing this exactly according to the scriptures. So it's our job to what? Reveal them, speak on them. Now, there's certain things we can't say due to the algorithm and due to, to Esau, you know, trying to stop the word from going out. They'll take videos down or, or destroy entire channels. Matter of fact, that's what happened to, you know, the camp that I'm in, the men of Israel camp. Uh, that's why our channel is called Men of Israel too, because our entire first channel, Men of Israel, Esau took that thing down, man. We have no evidence of any labor, you know, for, for all those years, man. Especially the, the uh, head of the camp, man. You know, all his labor on that channel, channel was gone. But ultimately, he's not stopping anything. You know, he of course, he's going to try. But this word is going to go out and it's going to comfort all those whom the Lord wants to be prepared for what evils Esau Edom has planned for the Israelites to go through. Because yes, not only are they planning and scheming, but they're actually going to execute these things. And as soon as they believe that, guess what? They have successfully accomplished their enterprise, so to speak, then come in sudden destruction, man. Like scriptures say, when they declare peace and safety, then come in sudden destruction. These judgments are still gonna come to pass. 
All right, let me see if I can get through the description now, right? It says, Jeremiah 49 and 10, but I have made Esau bare. There's not going to be any part of Esau that he's done, any wickedness that he's done that's not going to be addressed, man. It says, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not, man. So ultimately, all of the Edomites, starting with the wicked elites, those that actually are pulling the strings behind the scenes, so to speak, all the way down to these low-level Edomites that don't even know what the hell an Israelite is, never even read a Bible a day in their life. They probably, you know, broke homeless, you know, because you saw they wicked towards their own people too. They probably living in trailers, you know, homeless, uh, bugged out on drugs. Yeah, even them, they themselves, you know, because they're all Edomites. They some and they passed like that and did something to an Israelite wicked. The Lord is gonna bring that judgment upon all of the Edomites, man. All right. Once again, shalom to everybody. Brother Yara Amya Chazak commented, uh, Davos being the highest point in Switzerland. Khan, that's right. That's the, the highest uh, the, the highest mountain peak in Switzerland. Or exactly where they gather. Right? Also commented Psalms 83 and 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And that's right. They The, the heathen can't agree on one thing besides... The Israelites need to be our servants. Fuck, I mean, not fuck, you know, it's like, y'all, to hell with all they saying, how they the chosen, how they needing to the rule. Let the Edomites tell it. They'll, they'll convince the other heathen that, look, I know y'all hate me, I know y'all hate us, but let's come together just to plot against these people. As long as we keep them down, we can all do whatever the hell we want to do. And that's ultimately the wine that Esau has been able to seduce these other nations with. Do as thou wilt. Don't listen to these Israelites. Don't don't hold yourself to the standards that they put in place. Who are they? And who is their God? You know, like like Pharaoh said in, in ancient Egypt to Moses, Yahweh, uh, I, I know him not. I serve, you know, the God of Ra and other shit. You know, I don't know this God you speak of. I'm going to do what I want with my gods, to my servants, my slaves, as I please. And that's ultimately the same spirit the Lord has put upon Esau Edom. You know, they they are the true wicked, of, according to the Bible, and they are who are being revealed in these latter days. Once again, the so-called white men, women, and children are the main. Let me show you this word right, because I know there's antagonists and protagonists. I believe the antagonist is against. Yes, okay, antagonist definition as a noun. It says a person who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something, an adversary. And that's literally what Satan means. Adversary, adverse, against, an opponent, right? Your enemy, your foe, your nemesis, your rival, your competitor. This is, these are all similar words that go into antagonist. So the, the so-called white men, women, and children are the main antagonists of the Israelites, the main chief enemies, right? When you read Psalm 83, I believe right after that verse three that we read, verse five, I believe it goes to mention the nations and it starts right off with Edom first, man. You know, why even? You go back to Genesis, it tells you that Esau was Jacob's twin brother in the womb. All the other nations can't say that. Esau and Jacob have a, a, a special relationship that the Lord is manifesting within these latter days. It started all the way back then, you know, thousands of years ago, but the spirit that the Lord put within those two children, they, once again, as prophecy said in the book of Genesis, that ultimately they would both become great nations and the elder would serve the younger. The, the Lord already gave us the end result of that, that uh, opposition between the seeds, between both sons. And ultimately, although we don't see the Israelites ruling over the Edomites now, right? We see the Edomites ruling over the Israelites right now. But according to biblical prophecy, once again, they're being revealed that the only reason they got this rulership is through wickedness. And the scripture let us know that a nation built upon iniquity, it, it loosely paraphrased, and it, it can't last. It cannot stand. It must needs be destroyed, man. Right? So this is going back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, verse 8, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then, right? Not all the way back then, you know, like once again, uh, even before I came into the truth, I was a Christian believer. Nobody in Christianity was talking about Esau. Nobody was talking about Edom, the Edomites. They literally, if you ask a Christian, they, they probably don't even know that the book of Obadiah is in the Bible. 
You know, because I remember when I first heard of Obadiah, I was like, this man sound like a Jedi, like a Star Wars character. I was like, Obadiah. But yeah, you got that one page, that one book, and it's heavy in the spirit because what he spoke on, it literally lined up with this preset, with that preset, with here a little and there a little, and it all, it displays the full aspect of why the Lord made the Edomites. It's for them to be wicked, and then for ultimately all of Edom to be destroyed, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Once again, he's consuming them by revealing their wickedness. They, they, they've spent trillions of dollars, you know, uh, long sleepless nights even, to try to keep this truth under wraps. And it's to none avail, it's to no, to no purpose, because why? Esau, you know, he is the devil, but he, he only does what the Heavenly Father allows him to do. He's a servant just like we are, except for, you know, he's a servant that can be done away with. You know, we are servants that the Lord delights in everlasting, man. You know, that, that he even entered into a covenant with to establish us and our seed after us, starting from our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, that we would be a nation in the earth before him, a nation of kings and priests forever, right? You saw them can't say that. They are priests on the left-hand side to do wickedness, to do witchcraft and sorcery and magic, you know, on the left-hand side, but they're not set up to last forever, man. Right? Hey, that's right. <laughs> that's right, brother. All right. So, continuing on, it says, and shall destroy, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So, once again, we still look forward to prophecy taking place. The scriptures say that Esau Edom is going to be destroyed at the brightness of the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, back into the earth. He's going to be destroyed, Right? And as the elders going too beautifully, as the spirit has made manifest the brightness of his coming, even going into the those chariots, man, when they come, you know, Esau Edom is going to have no way out. Not from the missiles, the thermonuclear missiles at the climax of World War Three. That is set up to be, you know, the, the, the great consumption of this land you call America. You also got the, the chariots, as the scriptures refer to them as the curse of the earth, you know, because they bring judgment and death and destruction, man. You know, also deliverance to the elect, but destruction to the enemies of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Then you also have the elect, those chosen Israelites, those chosen vessels that the scriptures say, those same men who were the uh, the spirit of his mouth, <laughs> the same ones that were proclaiming his 100% truth, they're going to be turned from fishers, from fishers of men into hunters, man. The Lord is going to endow them with spiritual power, man. They're going to be made and changed and conformed to the image of of our heavenly father Yahweh's only begotten son our lord Yahweh shai's likeness so they're gonna have uh, everlasting life in their bodies man you know to where they're gonna be basically like the scriptures call them a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth man there's ultimately nothing that can be hindered from their will you know which is to ultimately destroy the edomites man first by leading them into captivity along with the other nations but then also you know, after that millennial reign, that 1,000 year period, when the Lord gives us the green light, man, they're all going to be consumed with fire, man, and destroyed. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai has spoken it. Read that in the book of Obadiah. It says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So, yes, we're talking about the same man. That can pop up you you'll be scrolling through a social media app facebook instagram youtube TikTok. it don't matter you'll scroll through it and you'll see you know holographic technology you see esau able to you know cast things out into the air in midair and have you think it's a literal tangible creature or being right this is what his mind has been able to conceive to do what to be adverse as once again that name satan uh, Hashatan, the adversary, <laughs> he's been adverse to the truth. He's not going to come out and tell you, hey, we're the Edomites. I got you. No, he's not going to, he's not set up to do that, man. He's set up to, he he might drop, he might drop subliminals here and there, but, he, you know, he's ultimately set up to hide the truth about the matter. He'll tell you he's everybody. He'll tell you he's the Israelites. He'll tell you he's the, 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 the Moabites. He'll tell you he's the Ammonites. He'll tell you he's the hammer. He'll tell you he's anybody else. Watch his movies. He'll tell you he's Moses, uh, Jesus, God, 
They tell you he's all these people, but when we address the Edomites, who they have a prominent role in the scriptures and in biblical prophecy, oh no, they're done away. We don't know who they are. We don't even know if they even really truly existed. That's the sense that they'll take because they know the judgments that the Lord has pronounced upon Esau Edom, right? That's beautiful, but I'm going to grab those in a second. That's beautiful. It says, let's read it again, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders because the ability that the Lord has given him, you know, it, it, it's... Jake can't fathom that, man. Jake is not sitting at home. Jake is in the hood, you know, uh, drinking brews, smoking weed, you know, on other types of drugs, committing adultery, you know, being uh, Moe's. This is what Jake is concerned about. Esau is over here developing um, weapons of mass destruction. Esau is, is, is <laughs> this man can, like the head of the camp always says, you know you gotta be something special when you can enslave ants, man. You're so much of a devil that the ants can't even roam free in the earth. You gotta you snatch them up and put them in an ant farm. It's sick, man. This is what's on in the mind of the Edomites. The devil, according to the Bible, he wants to destroy any and every living thing, man. Starting with the Israelites, but ending with himself. If he can destroy the Israelites, to hell with his nation, man. That's how he thinks, man. You know, so the Lord is exposing him right now through the list of his prophets. You know, through, once again, Esau, Edom, established and developed the internet, right, technology. And ultimately, this is being used against him. You know, that's how beautiful the Lord is. Once again, we're in the age of information. And this is the worst thing Esau Edom has done. Letting so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Indians read. You know, when you think it wasn't too long ago where we couldn't even speak proper English, man. But then the Lord put his spirit upon specific individuals, specific men to guess what? Do research, do study, right? Learn. Now we built up and we're breaking down the same Bible that they used to enslave us, man. You know, we were revealing that they were uh, incorrectly using these scriptures. Although the Bible did say that they, we will be given into their hands to the times, times, and dividing of times in the book of Daniel. But yet and still, once again, Esau, Esau messed up, man. Letting niggas read, man. Because <laughs> now it's over with. <laughs> it's over with, man. The truth, even if you try to kill all the niggas right now that can read, man, the truth is out here. Those who the Lord wanted to hear and hearken and believe this truth, they got it. All the, the rest of the remnant of the Israelites, the scriptures do say, you know, some Israelites will wake up in, at that last hour, you know, right before them judgments really start getting worse and worse and worse. Hey, that's just their lot. But this truth is out here, man. You know, I've only been in the truth going on, you know, a little over like six years now. I, I forget the exact little window because I don't really deal with the calendar, but... You know, I've been in the truth long enough. Still not long. I'm still a babe in the truth, you know. But I've been in the truth long enough to know if you don't know who the Israelites are in 2024, hey, man, you better repent because the Lord got judgment set up for y'all, man. All you you clueless Israelites, you, you Israelites that are that have chosen to stay complacent and sottish, hey, man, the Lord's got some of the worst judgment set up for y'all because the truth was out here. You just preferred the lies. You preferred the working of Satan, man. You, pref you prefer deception and deceit and falsehood. So that, that's why when these judgments come, once again, Jacob trouble. Jacob's trouble has, is, bruh, Jacob's trouble could kick off within weeks, man. You know, the way prophecies are, are rolling out, the way these other nations are, are bombing shipping containers, you know, and America retaliating with 150, 160 missiles. Man, World War III, it, it, man. You ask me, where were three been started? But, you know, according to the mass media, they're not going to say that because they don't want to cause mass hysteria. They don't want people to start, like the scriptures say it's going to happen anyway, that uproar the people, civil unrest, civil wars even going on, you know, uh, people neighbor rising up against neighbor, all these things that the Bible prophesied are taking place. They're trying to hinder, but they can't. The word is going out at a rapid rate. Even as I'm making this lesson, there's hundreds of other brothers doing, you know, similar, you know, lessons through the spirit on the same exact things, man. You know, so there's nothing Esau can do. You know, it says Second Thessalonians 2 and 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, 
because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, right? Because y'all enjoy being deceived. Y'all, yeah, y'all skip past the, the brother's videos, skip past the brother's lessons, skip past the exhortations, skip past the live camps, skip past all of that. Might walk past them on the streets and everything, you know, might even hear some of it and agree. But yet the spirit have you keep walking because the Lord's not dealing with you because you found America to be your place of comfort. When the scriptures say, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. America has not been set up to be the kingdom of the Israelites. It's been set up to be bitter. All right? Because why? That destruction is coming here. That thermonuclear fire is coming here. The RFID CHIP, the, the mark of the beast, pursuing the Revelation 13, verses 16 on down, has been set up to be established here in America, where you live, nine times out of ten. All right? So you should consider these things. Well, damn. You know, even if they're not telling the truth, do I really want to be here? You know, what or how should I prepare for these things that they do have? You, you, you guys don't think like that, man. You know, so you guys are going to be blindsided by that destruction because you didn't believe in the truth. You didn't love the truth that you might be saved. And what is the truth? First John 5 and 3. For this is love, that we keep the commandments of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahweh. I butchered that scripture. It's lucky. First John 5 and 3, man. You know, keeping the Lord's commandments ultimately is how you show your love towards him. You know, it says 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And for this cause, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So when these so-called white people tell you, I don't hate you. I wasn't even there in slavery. I didn't do that. I don't, we should, that was in the past. Get over it. I'm not like that now. I love you. I have little black babies at my house. You know, they, they don't show their true, you know, feelings. But in Jacob's trouble, trust and believe, if you were saying you were Israelite and you saying you believe in the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh shy, trust and believe they're going to show their true colors, man. They're going to show that they were never in league with you. They never believed in your God. You can toss that Bible in the trash because what it says, what you guys are against women. You guys don't think that men and women are equal? You guys don't think that a man can change his gender? All, all this type of madness, man. You know, they, they're going to, guess what? Toss the Bible out the window. And what are the men of the Lord going to have to do? Still keep those words at the forefront of our minds. So the men of the Lord, they're not going to be swayed to and fro. They're not going to be deceived because they believe the truth. But all y'all that forsook the truth, that hated the truth, that despised and misused and abused the Lord's prophets, guess what? When these judgments start taking place, you're going to be looking for the prophets. You're going to be looking for a safe haven, you know, and you might seek refuge, like scriptures say, woe unto them that go down unto Egypt for help. You might seek aid and refuge by taking that device the size of a grain of rice, getting it in you just for momentary shelter or momentary food or, or just to, to think you're safe. But ultimately, the scriptures told us that nobody's going to escape the judgment of Yehovah by Shemiah Mashiach, right? It says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 12, that they all, matter of fact, let's read 11 again. It says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. So the Lord put the spirit on y'all to not understand the truth. Yes. Why do you think when you pick up the Bible and read it, you don't know a, a damn thing of what's going on in it? Because the Lord's put the spirit of strong delusion on you that you would believe a lie and not the truth. It says that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. So where is this God loves everybody? Where is this that everybody is going to be saved in the name of Jesus the Christ? It's not in the scriptures, man. It's not here. The scripture says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. And what is the truth? That through our Lord Yahweh Shai, the way of righteousness, everlasting life has been ministered unto us, man. Through our Lord Yahweh Shai and him alone. Either you believe that or not. And the scriptures say, whoever believes not that our Lord Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, the truth abideth not in him. And, and, and he's in, and let's paraphrase him, he's basically in, in that lot to possibly suffer that judgment of destruction because you, what, believe not the truth. It says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, right? So ultimately, the Lord has the judgment set up to come to pass in the earth. He's not just speaking because he likes the way his voice sounds, man. You know, and neither are we speaking just to hear ourselves talk or to see ourselves. No, we, we do this because we were commanded to. 
you know? We don't even do this because we believe everybody who watches the video is of the elect. They got it. They watch it, they tune in live. Every time I go live, they live, they comment presets. No, we don't do it for that. We do it for edification sake. So call all y'all, but y'all shy. But ultimately, we, we do this because we were commanded to with the hope that with our obedience, you know, and looking towards our Lord Yahweh Shai for rectification, for sanctification, for justification, you know, for deliverance and salvation. He is who will usher that unto us, man, based upon our faith, as faith and works go hand in hand, right? I read the scripture that the brother put up. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 11 and verse 7 from brother Yeramya Chazak says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So you see that? All of Israel's not going to get it, man. It's only set up for the elect. The rest were blinded. Blinded by who, you might ask? The Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, blinded you through the Edomites, who have been set up to orchestrate various lies, to bring up various doctrines, to teach you various science, falsely so-called, right? Because I'll tell you that, you're not an Israelite. Where, when did you do your DNA test? D did you come to me so I can prick you and, and test your blood just to tell you, no, you're not an Israelite? So, you know, ultimately they put themselves in, in the position to be the true judges of the earth. When the scriptures say, no, they cover up the faces of the true judges thereof, which are the Israelites, right? You go read the book of Judges in the Bible. You you will not see an Edomite mentioned in, in, in that genealogy and in, in that, you know, heritage as being a judge, man, the only judges are the Israelites, man, you know, as they were set up to judge the earth through the commandments. That's our lens. That's our, our, our meters, so to speak, on how we are able to judge what is righteous and what is wicked by what the Heavenly Father deemed so, all right? All right. Uh, Shalom. You yeah, the brother Yashamai 144K. Uh, he commented that same precept, Amos 3 and 7. It says, Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Brother said, We could be revealed through prophets. That's exactly right, man. You know, the Lord is using his mouthpieces. Matter of fact, I'm glad I said that again through the Spirit so I can grab that as well. Right? Because the Lord set up his prophets to be his mouthpiece to call out Esau Edom on his BS, man, what he's actually been doing. Because no, the Lord, yeah, the Lord allowed him to do that. But the Lord is not allowing Esau Edom to be wicked because he wants it to last forever. No, this is the Lord's whooping stick to the Israelites, man. You know, this is how the Lord chastises us when we go off by allowing our enemies to ultimately rule and reign over us to our destruction until the Heavenly Father is pleased and, and comes to deliver his elect, man. All right. So like, bear me one second. Let me see if I can grab this really quickly. Mm, beautiful precess, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, I'll try to most paraphrase it to you brothers that are tuned in. Maybe one of you guys, Bob Kishak, could drop it in the comment board where the Lord says, loose paraphrasing, you know, uh, I believe it's either to Jeremiah or Isaiah where he said, and that shall be my mouthpiece. Loosely paraphrasing, or he could have said, you know, I believe that's how it goes. Matter of fact, let me let's see if I can Google it real quick. I might not be spelling something right. Okay. Hold on. Nope. Hey. Uh-oh. Okay, I think this is it. Let me see. Yeah, I believe this is it. Let me see. That's not it, man. Esau changed the words on Google. 
Okay, I'll use this description. This is the one it took me to. It's not what I was looking for, but it, it puts it still paints the same picture. So it's edifying, right? Exodus chapter four and verse fifteen. Just to get straight to the point, it says, and this was the Lord speaking uh to ultimately Moses and Aaron. Matter of fact, the water uh, that's exactly I'm gonna read that right after this. Uh Exodus four and fifteen it says, And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do right because the lord was sending moses and aaron to pharaoh the king of egypt to to speak the words of the lord unto them unto him you know and it says in verse 16 and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people referring to aaron aaron was going to speak for moses it says and he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth and thou shalt be to him instead of a power all right so that's actually just referring to uh aaron being moses mouthpiece not really what i wanted but the brother commented what i wanted the what uh uh yaramya chazak and, and shalom brother naira kalaya this is jeremiah 15 and 19 therefore thus saith the lord if thou return then will i bring thee again and thou shalt stand before me and if thou take forth the precious from the vial thou shalt be as my mouth there we go it's fire I thought it. let uh let them return unto thee but return not thou unto them right so ultimately when we repent we're not supposed to even go back to dibble and dabble with the world no we are to do exactly as the lord commanded us and speak the 100 percent truth that he has given unto us which is this entire role the entire bible the entire volume not picking and choosing what chapter what dispensation the time the scripture is referred to no the entire thing as all of the precepts right all of these scriptures here a little and there little is how the gospel the truth of the matter is revealed right the water that's literally exactly what i want the brother yashima 144k also commented hosea 12 and 10 i have also spoken by the prophets Woo! <laughs> and i have multiplied visions and use similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So that's how the Lord reveals his will. All right? That's how the Lord manifests the truth by his prophets, his servants, man. So going back, look, this is Jeremiah chapter 49. And I'll start at verse 9. It says, If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? <laughs> if thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. Right? So going into the aspect of thieves and robbers, you know. Normally, you know, when a thief and robber comes to steal, they know exactly what they're stealing. They don't normally take everything, you know, yet the Lord Yahweh Shai, as he's been revealed to come and be the one who's going to judge America, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. even Esau Edom, right? He's not going to leave any part of Esau Edom untouched, man. You know, as it says, Jeremiah 49 and 10, but I have made Esau bare right why is the scriptures talking about esau why why if this is look jeremiah revealing this through the spirit why is he talking about esau ain't that man been there you know ain't he been gone no it's because the lord deals like the scripture said there's no new thing under the sun and uh, the other precept that also tells us there is no end of all the people even of them which shall uh be thereafter lucy paraphrasing the edomites the descendants of Esau are still here today, right? Fulfilling their lots, fulfilling their roles, playing their parts in prophecy, which is being the wicked. And it says, but I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself as he so diligently sought to do, right? <laughs> the caves couldn't hide him because he fled from them and tried to live amongst the world. And now look what he's done, just been a, uh, a devil uh, when it comes to everything and anything man you can't even eat, eat uh natural food from the earth without having it uh have pesticides sprayed on it or some type of uh gmos introduced to it in some process right as you're let's say a farmer right as uh what's his name uh that edomite that was buying up all the farmland the kill gates thought y'all about Shamel Shah. <laughs> kill gates man even even when you want to have your own farmland and do your own agriculture and, and you know grow your own crops and food he, he, here comes the damn devil 
you know, to, to say no. We're going to set up regulations to where if you keep trying to farm and do this and that, you're going to be fined. You have to pay this, that, and the third. So instead of doing all that and jump through all them hoops, they much rather sell it to him, get a good check, and just go live happy somewhere. And, and now what is Killgate doing? Taking them same lands that were used for farming, and he's using it to uh, probably, you know, build buildings to where he's going to start mass producing those printed foods man the the um what's a better word for it man they call it um dang basically it's just printed food man it's lab grown food it's not actual you know food from the earth man it's genetically modified you know uh to ultimately cause cancers disease death yeah, well, yeah, basically GMOs, false meat, man, you know? And once again, these are all the things that Esau Edom has tried to do to keep the Israelites in sin, keep them going off in some form or fashion, all right? You can't even brush your teeth without possibly having pork in it, right? In your brushes, right? And, and, and you know, it, it, any and every way that Esau Edom can bring sin into the earth, he's done it, man, you know? And he's about to put the cherry on top by establishing the NWO that he's been telling everybody about, right? I don't have a dollar bill right now on me, but if you have a dollar bill, you flip around over on the back. You know, you got the all-seeing eye, right? The, the Egyptian pyramid with the Latin written around it, which tells you about his NWO, Novus Ordo Seclorum, New Order of the Ages, right? Brother said even the concrete has pork in it. This is sick, man. This place has to go, man. The damn concrete. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> you know, everything Esau touches, ultimately he uses, you know, to, to make it a snare and a trap for the Israelites, man. And he's doing it successfully, except he did not take into consideration that the Lord has a remnant, man. The Lord has an election set up according to grace. To, oh, oh, <laughs> on, <right? laughs> the Lord has an election set up according to the election of grace to not bow the knee, right? To not uh, be overcome by the wickedness of this world, man. And the, the blood brother, you know, <laughs> brought me the dollar. All right, look at this, all right? Once again, I'm not sure if it's gonna be inverted backwards because of the camera, but you see, you can clearly see the Egyptian pyramid and it says Anuit Septus, right? Which I always butcher that when I say it, but right on the bottom, right? Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is not a new thing since the bill was printed. They've been having this on there. It's not like I got one of the ancient, what well, the dollar do kind of look ancient. <laughs> well, it's not well, you know, one of the ancient dollars where they didn't have no pyramid on it. No, even today, as they continue to print new bills, it's still there. It's not an accident. They put it here deliberately as Esau Edom, once again, he'll sprinkle the truth amongst the lies. So you won't be able to tell the, the, the truth from the lie. You won't be able to discern the good from the evil, right? It, it's sick, man. You know, then he got, he got the nerve even to put in God we trust. But let me get that. I told you what Novus Ordo Seclorum means, New Order of the Ages, aka NWO, New World Order. But Anuit Septus, right, which is Latin, it means he favors our undertakings, right, which is true in a sense of the Lord allowed them to do this to oppress his people. You know, that's a very true statement, but they have been deceived into thinking it was going to be for forever, man. The elites know. The elites, you know, they've heard the prophecies. They they know what the scriptures foretell for their future. But since they are not spiritual, they have the the brain, the brain capacity for doubt, right? To where, yeah, we hear that, but look at the power that we have. When we actually want to destroy the Israelites, we can do it. Look at these niggas in the ghetto destroyed. We 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 tell them, you know, we hire a, a Zion like Sukiana or Sexy Red or you know whoever Nicki Minaj whatever whoever they hire to promote you know horse activity, sodomite activity, gang activity, nigga culture, black culture. We get them to promote things like this, and they do it right off the bat. They even pay us to continue to poison them with this madness. So. Once again, they're successful in their enterprise, but once again, they have been deceived thereby, right? Like the scriptures say, thine pride hath deceived thee. Yeah, the Edomites truly think that this is gonna last forever. But nah, man, the kingdom of heaven is the, the 
dominion which shall last forever, which is going to be ruled and governed by the true Israelites, all 12 tribes under our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? As he exists to be, you know, our mediator and our, our vengeance, right? That has been promised unto us, right? By Yahweh Shai. So let's read this. Uh, matter of fact, let me jump to Psalms 137 really quick. And I'll get like, one more scripture after this and I'll wrap it up. You know, the water, everybody who, you know, who are tuned in and are also contributing to the lesson, the one. All right, this is Psalms 137. And starting at verse seven, it says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom and the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Once again, why in the hell are we continually making mention of Edom, the Edomites? For one, it's because every time they risen up against us, it's never been anything small. Right, it's never been anything to where you could just wink at that like it didn't happen. Anytime the Edomites came up against us, it was heavy, man, because the Lord was, excuse me, because the Lord was dealing with them, using them to bring judgment upon us for our sins, for our iniquity. Right? It says, "Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, in the day of Yahweh Shalom, in the day of Jerusalem." Right, which goes back to 70 A.D. You know when the Edomites ransacked the temple. You know, you had Israelites flee from Jerusalem. Uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, you know, flee from Jerusalem. Who were wise, they fled into uh, the southern uh, coast of Africa, you know, in various parts of Africa to seek refuge and to, to flee from persecution and enslavement. <laughs> and Esau, Edom, guess what they did? They destroyed our land, man. Consumed it, ransacked the temple, took all the precious things out of the temple, you know. Ultimately, it's going to be to their own destruction, as it says. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, right? Destroy this temple, destroy this holy land, cast these images down, you know, slay all men and women and children, old and young, you know. That was their intent. They wanted to make the name of Israel no more in remembrance. And it says in Psalms 137, Psalms 137 and verse 8, O daughter of Babylon. So we're talking about the Edomites, but the scriptures refer to the Edomites prophetically as the daughter of Babylon, not ancient Babylon, because we understand Babylon was destroyed, right? Even the, the ancient, ancient Babylon, going back to the Tower of Babel, even that was, they were confounded. You, you read the book of Genesis, right? Then Babylon, right? Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar ruled, you know, with, with, uh, with Daniel, you know, you go read those accounts. Even uh, that captivity had to be relinquished, right? Because the Lord has always been only dealing with the Israelites to set up rulership. So, yeah, we were in slavery for a point in time, but the Lord also showed us mercy and delivered us. Go read the book of Judges. It tells you all the various captivities where the Lord sent his servants to deliver us, to comfort us with prophecy, to, to build us up spiritually to, to, to turn back unto Yahweh by Shemiel Shai our power to repent and then the Lord would hear us and, and have mercy and deliver us but when you read about the daughter of Babylon this is a nation that has been set up to receive a judgment that no other nation has ever experienced man neither will any other nation ever experience and that is the thermonuclear fire via the ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles that the Lord has promised to come and melt this place, man. All those, read Revelation uh, 14, all those that receive that haragma, that physical mark within them, yes, you're going to have your part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the promise of the Lord. It says Psalms 137 and 8, O daughter of Babylon, aka America, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us, right? Didn't you say raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof? Leave not one stone standing, basically. Yeah, guess what? The Lord has a besom of destruction that he's promised to come and just consume the entire land of America, man. You know, all. I'm, and when I say America, I'm talking about North America, man. You know, the place where they got the White House, they got the, the Las Vegas, they got the California, you know, the, the, um, trying to think about all the like hot spots. They got the New York, this place that everybody loves and thinks that this is the, the, uh, the most precious kingdom in the world. You know, who can touch America? Yeah, this place, the Lord is going to be the one to touch America, man. 
You know, it says Psalms 137 and eight. The point again at the latter half, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So this is a righteous judgment that we're talking about. You reap what you sow. Uh, Galatians, what is that? Three and six that says, be not deceived for your how about me shy is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. You sow iniquity, right? What do you expect to reap besides destruction? Right, and you didn't just sow iniquity on anybody, you sowed it on the apple of the Lord's eyes, the children of Israel. It says Psalms 137, happy shall uh in verse 9, happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones, right? So it's gonna be a merciless judgment in that day. The the elect are and Nabaratza, you know, Lord willing, we all be a part of that number, man. May the blessing of election be upon our houses, man. But the elect who, who get to, to be joint heirs with establishing the dominion of the Israelites in the earth, man, they're going to be happy to render these judgments unto their adversaries, their enemies, starting with the Edomites, man. Because all the other nations, don't get me wrong, y'all have judgments to pay for as well. But the Edomites, hey, <laughs> go read the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, man. Edom, as it says, when you go look up the, the meaning and the representation of Edom in the, in the Bible, it says Edom prominently is a scene of great future judgment and is the only nation, loosely paraphrasing, which has not been uh, promised mercy. They are the only ones, man. You know, let me grab this real quick. The brothers uh, dropped Luke 12 and 2. Brother Yashima 144K. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known, right? Because right now, even as we're but men, we prophesy in part and we speak in part. So we can teach you the 100% truth. But there's still certain things that Esau Edom is doing behind the scenes, behind closed curtains, you know, behind closed doors, you know, that we don't know of. That there's no way for us to know, except Yahweh Bashim Shai, guess what? Reveals that knowledge unto us, which will be done for the elect, man. When they receive that that change, right? Which now that I say that, I remember I gotta read that brother's precept because he commented this, man. When that change comes, man, the elect, here we go. The Wadi Yahweh Bashim Shai, the elect are gonna be endowed with ultimate understanding, man. To everything our Lord Yahweh Shai is seeing now. And understanding that same mind is going to be translated, transferred, copied even into the minds, the la'ab, the hearts of the elect Israelites, those judges, the alahayim, all right, those powers. The brother commented this preset uh, to back this up. Uh, brother Yeramia Chazak, Philippians 3 and 21 says, Who shall change our vile body, right? These vile fleshly wicked bodies that we dwell in now that are subject to sin yeah we rehearse the righteous acts but it's rehearsal our righteousness is as filthy rags so yeah even though we teach the 100 truth we still have to look to our lord yahweh shai for that change as he is completely righteous now as we seek to be it says who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He's a chief supreme judge, a chief supreme ruler, whom all have to bow down and worship <laughs> for you non-believers out there and be subject unto his commandments. You know, that's the seat that our Lord Yahweh Shai is in. And he's made, made it known unto his brethren that they are joint heirs in his kingdom, man. So once again, that... That ultimate knowledge is going to be bestowed upon the elect. That's why when they are turning to those hunters, they're going to know exactly who they're looking for. They're going to know exactly where to go. You know, spiritual power, uh, they will also have. So they'll be able to even read minds, man. They'll know what you're thinking. So even, you know, deep in the back part of your mind, you're trying to hide that one iniquity, hide that one sin that you don't want nobody to find out about. They know it, man. And they're going to judge you according to it. All right? All right, and we're going to, I'm, I'm going to finish right here. We'll end it right here with this scripture and any other verse that you brothers might put up on the comment board. This is Obadiah 1 and 6. You can, I, I recommend everybody, you know, for those of y'all who haven't heard of this Jedi warrior, <laughs> go and read the book of Obadiah, man. It sums up beautifully, you know, what this lesson was going into, man. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, How are the things of Esau searched out? 
how are his hidden things sought up? So ultimately, no matter what you did, no matter what sin or iniquity, you just think, yeah, the Lord, he ain't, he ain't gonna care about that. Or, or, or like the Christianity church will say, well, God knew my heart. He knew I didn't, you know, I didn't mean it like that. No, man, the Lord's gonna judge you accordingly, right? So how are the things of Esau searched out? If Esau, the damn devil, according to the Bible, all of his works are gonna be sought out, how much more the apple of the Lord's eye? The people who, you know, it was never meant for them to, to, to suffer the curses like we have. You know, of course, you know, through the spirit, the Lord had it play out like this perfectly for a reason to give glory to his son. But ultimately, the scriptures say we it was it was never for us to drink of this cup. Yet we drunk. So if we had to drink, Esau eat him, you're not escaping. And then on the flip side, if Esau eat him couldn't escape, what makes you wicked ass? Negro lights, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians who reject this truth, what makes you think the Lord don't see you? When the only reason he's judging Esau is because he loves us. Started with his, his elect first. Nothing, matter of fact, I'm gonna end with that. Nothing that is in the dark is it, gonna go unseen, man. All things shall come to light, man. And we'll end it here. All right. All right, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26 is also in Mark chapter 4 and verse 22. It's also in Luke chapter 8 and verse 17. It's also in Luke chapter 12 and verse 2, right? This is Matthew 10 and 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. All right. So with that, I brought to our Lord willing. This was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazak, whom I teach under here in Greenwood, South Carolina, and a hearty and healthy Shalom, Shabbat Shalom even, to sincere Achyam Wagwathim, you know, who were edified and sincerely and diligently working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation. All right, so y'all say Shabbat Shalom. I'm going to end it by facing the east. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, 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 Call the Mayam, La Abanawa Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahaha Kodash, Wa Abba Gabal. All right, death to the wicked. Shalom.